Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is another 61 Benz episode. Today is about the cooling system. I got stuff. I got a lot of stuff that was cheap. It was good stuff that was, I should say, inexpensive. It ain't cheap. Um, but I'm excited. I got, got all the cooling or the cooling stuff out of the car. So I took out the thermostat housing, the water pump housing, the water pump, <clears throat> obviously the radiators out of it. Um, also, while I'm kind of got some time and time to play, I uh, readjusted the valves. I had a clackering one here in the front, so I went back through it. This time I looked up, that looked it up. I was pretty close. I made them all eight, a sloppy eight. So I made all the exhaust valves in eight thousandths, and the intakes are five thousandths. So I fixed all those, and um, I got did, did some work on the valve cover and the air filter cover although I don't have all of it here's the valve cover here's what it turned out so it's complete um, it's kind of low-hanging fruit you know every time I touch a part I try to fix it up while I'm holding it it came out really nice you can even see the writing on it now and everything is in detail I got a new gasket for it. It was uh, lots of scrubbing on that part. And then I used a aluminum color paint that I painted it with to make it because it's originally aluminum color, but you know, over the years it's so stained and I don't have the fancy chemical dip to do that, to totally clean it where it should be. So I cheated a little bit and found some close. Uh, the other parts that I refurbed were the thermostat housing. This was sandblasted also. You know, you can see the part numbers now. That was uh, way gone. Like, that was so corroded. I got the water pump housing. Same thing. It was painted. There's the thermostat housing. That was all cleaned up on the inside could see some of the numbers these were painted these are new hoses so let me get into all the stuff I bought um, I said I was stopping the project for now because of funds but I found a $39 water pump which was amazing um, <clears throat> it's a uh, Febby Bilstein it's it's a name brand it's not a cheap knockoff uh, here's the water pump itself and the cool thing is is it has the actual they made the impeller plastic but they made it the correct shape which is pretty cool because here's what the original guy looks like um, that's the shape of it and you see how they mimicked the new shape so the cheap pumps, the cheap pumps are just bent little prongs. I don't know if I have one. I used to have a cheap pump, which broke. May ended up out there on the side of Mater's shed. Anyway, you can kind of see it. See the impeller is just a bunch of metal plates. It was stamped out. This was an aftermarket pump. It was brand new. But it broke couldn't hold the torque anyway so that's what the impeller looks like so i'm pretty happy to get the original shape of it which means it's gonna work i was a little concerned getting one of those stamped out ones so this thing was about 39 dollars i ended up getting the thermostat which is right here this guy was a Male, um, it's German by Bear. That's the German OEM part. Um, here you see one with the disc I was telling you about on the bottom. Uh, this is the one that, when this thing opens up, it pushes this disc downwards. 
and it plugs this I will take this apart but you see where that seat is there it kind of fits in there like that and then you see where that disc is that disc pushes downwards and plugs that hole so that's how the passage diversion thing is the other low-hanging fruit I got I got OEM hoses the bottom radiator hose the bypass coupler top radiator hose I got the breather tube for the valve cover now I got these because these hoses were believe it or not they were less than 10 bucks and like you can't even get that at AutoZone you know what I mean and this is some good quality stuff so I um I just got it bit the bullet and got it and um that's it for the coolant parts I have one more but you got to stick around for that at the end of the video because it hasn't arrived yet and also I reworked the uh, the fan this was the original fan I sort of reworked that to make it look the original color so this will go back on and uh, rework the water pump pulley this will go on there so I got yes I got another mess going on and here's the uh, air filter cover or the cover for the carburetors and you can see they the numbers came out after doing it so it turned out pretty good that thing was like totally rusted I'll show you what the rest of it looks like here's the here's the can you could see how rusted this is that's the top this actually connects to that I found another one of these boots but yeah that's all gotta this was the air filter um, so that's got to be sandblasted at some point but I figured I, I actually keep that part on the car I don't want it to backfire on my face well I don't have an air filter hooked up yet but um, you know it is what it is then uh, picked up another $10 tire I was excited found a $10 tire um, on one of them let it go or give it up or however that goes um, anyway this tire here one of the tires is um, 30 years old and it finally gave up the ghost it uh, holds air for about 15 minutes so I have to either keep the car on the lift or I got to keep the car on the jack and then when I go to move it I got to fill it up and then when I leave it out in the yard 15 mil minutes later it's down on the rim and I'm not I'm not ready to buy like new tires for it yet so anyway when I get going I'm gonna swap this tire first because I need this space here to do it um, if you care to know how I do it look up the tires on the Mercedes there's another episode I'm not gonna film this but but I'm gonna take care of this tire while I have the space I got rain coming so I got to put the truck back in here and um, that way I can work with the door shut and the heater on when the rain comes so let me get going see how much of a mess I can make wow that's a big uh, that's a huge drain plug that stuff's gonna come out fast There it goes. It's good to run it though. At least it flushed out a lot of the a lot of the crud that was in there. Don't worry, there'll be one more oil change before this thing hits the road. Like hardcore hits the road. This oil I'm putting in now is just to wash it out even more. Anticipate any shavings in there. Uh, it is sludgy in there, that's for sure. I can feel it. Yeah, you can.
can see that stuff coming out at the bottom. But I'm not pulling that oil pan. This will be all right. I'll let that drain and I'm going to try to pull this filter. So here's a new one. I, ha I have to say I haven't seen this one yet. Um, there's no oil filter. Somebody took out the oil filter. Nice of them to uh, leave me the candle. Looks like I'll be changing an oil filter a little more often because this this one I'm about to put in is gonna catch a lot of crap. Um, there's a lot of yucky stuff in there. We'll wash it out and run it. All right, gonna continue where we left off. Got the oil change done. I got the new filter into the housing. Uh, that was interesting that there was no filter. I guess the junkyard must have pulled it and just put the can back in. But luckily all the spacers and things were inside the can. So it was nice of them to, you know, leave all the critical parts behind. But it's good. Put the new oil in. Today I'm going to focus on getting the water pump on it and all the housings. The water pump housing and the thermostat housing, which is this gigantic glob of stuff. I'm going to separate that. <clears throat> and um, I got to scrape some gaskets here, one I didn't scrape. So I got to do this one here. Got the new gasket right here. That guy right there. And I got <clears throat> other gaskets somewhere here. These are for the thermostat housing and the other water pump housing piece. I got a scrape off. I think I got a gasket right there. Got to scrape that guy off. Clean up these threads right here. Um, probably run up run a die over those or something and then I think this one I think some of that most of that came off I gotta clean that one so the cooling system here's how it actually works so you got this here this hole on the block is where the pump sits here and this hole is where the pump pushes the water the cold water from the radiator into the block and it goes through the block um, down in there if you shine in there I can't really shine in there but you could see the cylinder walls in there Anyway, the water gets pushed in here, goes up through the around where the cylinders are, up into the head. And there's two places it exits the head. It goes out of here is the main hole, which is the thermostat housing. And the secondary is on the other side of the head, it's the heater hose. So that water is part of the recirculation path that um, allows that water to go through your heater cores. This car has two heater cores, a driver's side and a passenger. And once it goes through those, it comes back out, which would be this hose, and then goes back into the thermostat housing. Let me actually mimic that. All right, so a couple things going on here. There's the thermostat. The thermostat drops in there like that. This goes to the radiator. And this goes, comes in from the radiator. This comes around and goes to the bottom of the radiator. This is where the heater hose would plug in. So this pipe is the suction side of the pump. You can see where 
the impeller that rotates in here sucks water through the center and ejects the water, pressurizes it into the outer ring. And the outer ring is what pushes it down into that channel outwards. It also pushes it into a little bypass line, which this is more of an air bleed type of a thing. It's so the pump doesn't cavitate. And it's got a little uh, bypass doofer like this. <clears throat> And this part, this part goes like that. And all it is is it connects the high pressure side of the pump back to the exit path of the head. And all it is is for if there's air trapped inside the pump, it'll just push it back around. That way the pump primes itself. The pump sits right here. It goes right in this housing. You can see the impeller right here and um, so as the suction side sucks through the bottom side of the radiator which where the bottom is where the cool water is the top is where the hot water is and it's got in from the heater cores in from the radiator and in from the head so when your thermostat up here when your thermostat is closed, which is this point, when it's closed going through this to the top of the radiator from here, this is the output, the only output in the system which goes to the top of the radiator. So when the thermostat is closed at the top, it opens this disc and allows the water to be sucked into this center hole and it sucks the water from the head so it um, comes out of the cylinder head and then it goes right back into the intake of the pump it is mixed with some of the uh, the bottom radiator hose but very little because there's no pressure in the radiator since the output is closed but it does suck in the heater core. The heater core is part of the recirculation. And then <clears throat> the pump will take the stuff coming out of the head and then back in through the block and it just goes around. That's your warm up cycle. So that allows the engine to warm up faster. It circulates the water through the block, through the head, and through the heater cores at the same time which gets the heater flowing faster on a cold day. Once the thermostat opens, once this piston slides down and this disc moves down, the disc will plug the bypass suction hole down here and the stuff coming out of the head is gonna flow through the open thermostat, through this housing, into the top of the radiator. And that's, that's what happens when the thermostat is open that way. So once the thermostat's open, the hot water now flows to the top of the radiator, then gets cooled off, and the cooler stuff's on the bottom gets sucked back into the engine. But that's pretty much how it works. So this rainy afternoon, it's one of those heater going in the shop days. I'm going to get these finished up and I'm going to get the housings all on the motor and get the hoses all hooked up and um, I'll probably stop there because I'll be out of time I don't want to be here too long this is just got a couple hours or an hour to wrench so I'm going to try to at least get the housings on and the water pump on and the belt with the fan and everything alright it's all back in there yeah, I don't film the actual work. Nobody watches it, but it's only a progress thing. So I got the housings back in, thermostat in there, uh, brand new hose in there. Got the uh, generator back, the belt, the pulley, new water pump, and the refurbished fan. I also got a new condenser. Um, Yep, 
it's a name brand so it's good i don't have the points the place that i happened to get the condenser from it didn't have the actual points so i'm still running on the file down points but it is what it is uh pretty much ready for the radiator but i wish i could do that today and fire it up and drive it but that ain't gonna happen because you know that thing over there um the old ford falcon can you sing m-i-c-k-e-y yeah that the whole pvc thing and that i had and all that mickey mouse well that thing ain't going back in there i i did get lucky and i have the oem radiator on its way it's an original and it looks in pretty decent shape it's the old copper radiator that actually fits the hole um i was pretty amazed when i found it it was an accident somebody must have cleaned out their shed you know how it is these guys want like a million bucks for the you know crusty old radiators like 550 dollars when you can buy a a new aluminum one from Germany for $550. But anyway, I got this one for $92 and 40 bucks to ship it from New York. And it's due in next week. It's on its way, but there's a lot of snowstorms everywhere, so it's it's moving slow, but it's coming via FedEx, so I'm excited. Um so we're going to have a original radiator, which I'm pretty stoked about. So it's going to be a pretty happy engine. Um, so we got a oil filter, which is nice. New oil. Got a valve adjustment, the second one. It got a thermostat, a brand new water pump, and a new condenser. It's going to get a smaller battery. I'm going to take this battery and swap it out with another one that's a little smaller that'll actually fit the tray um, so I can bolt it in and um, then I can fire it up the next part is uh, who knows I may work the brakes I'm gonna try to resurrect the old master cylinder because I did get it apart rubbers are okay I may hone it up and you know kind of hone it out and massage it a little bit massage the rubbers and see if I can get it to work and maybe activate the rear axle hydraulically. Um, I don't have the parts for the front. But that's where I'll be working on. And then I want to take the dashboard apart. I want to get to get, pull the instrument panel. And I need to get and remove the key thing. Um, because I don't, have, I don't have the original key for it. That's why I've been hot wiring it this entire time. I just got the switch to hickey. Um, I should probably search the floorboards or the or the um, glove compartment. Maybe there is a key there. You never know. But yeah, I want to be able to actually start it from the inside. I got to hook up a better rigging for the starting, and um, I want to get to the back side of the other switches. So I can kind of start fixing those and things. And the dashboard's got to come out anyway. But so that's it for now. We'll uh, probably see you next weekend when I'm doing the radiator. Um, school starts next week, so it's going to be busy again. There goes all the spare time. But anyway, hey. Thanks for watching and until next time.